everyone, it's Chuck Crosswhite here again with Premium Beat. And for this tutorial, I wanted to do something really ambitious. With the Academy Awards just around the corner, I wanted to tackle three nominees and discuss different points and techniques used with each film. I was gonna do montages with Marriage Story. I was going to do the post-color grading of the Joker, and I was gonna discuss cinematography of the lighthouse. As I was doing my research though, one of the films really started to take over me and my focus began to narrow and I started to dive deeper and deeper into the techniques behind this film and I was entranced. The idea of post-color and the Joker just started to fade away and the only thing I was left with was the desire to shine a spotlight on the lighthouse. Let's check it out. The first thing I want to talk about when you have a black and white project is actually shooting it in color. I know this sounds contrary, but the idea behind it is solid and it actually dates back decades and decades. Now, um, when you used to have a black and white camera or you were shooting on black and white film stock, a lot of times they would use red, orange, or yellow filters on their cameras. Sometimes even using red light or orange light or yellow light on their sets. And the reason behind this is these colors are gonna have a dynamic effect on the way the black and the white footage look for their project. But here we are in 2020 and we have the luxury of being able to forego all those color filters and we can just use post grading to change the color of our footage before we decide to desaturate the image to a black and white image. I needed some footage with a wide range of colors and that specifically had daylight in them to help visually show the effects of adding colors in post to alter the black and white film. So this is what the clip looks like normally. And here's the clip if we lower the saturation. Now, I'm going to raise the red and yellow levels on the footage before I desaturate to highlight the differences that color can have on your black and white footage. Notice how raising the red has blocked out more of the daylight, giving us a darker horizon, more definition in the waves, and deeper shadows in the hillside. Now when we raise the yellow, it allows more of the daylight in, causing the whites and the blues to be brighter in the desaturated footage. The Lighthouse is a gorgeous film. That's why it's nominated for cinematography by the Academy Awards. And, you know, I talked about the vintage lenses and the cameras and the custom film stock that they had. And the interesting thing about that was that the film stock had such a low sensitivity to light that they were actually blasting light quite a bit all over the place. The lantern that's actually in the scenes I'm recreating, it said that they had an 800 watt bulb in it. Now I'm on the other end. I have a digital camera and I have the ability to post grade my exposure in color um, of the black and white for my recreations. So what I did was instead of blasting light everywhere, I actually used practical lighting effects. Let me walk you through the, the props I had real quick and then we'll get into the recreations. Since I'm recreating the dining room scenes from the lighthouse, obviously I'm gonna need a table. Um, I found this one laying around in the office. It's from a video that Todd did about product shots that you can find here. And I thought it had a nice rustic look. It would be a good fit for what I'm going for. I don't have a set, I don't have a location, I don't have an art team, I don't have a lighthouse. So I'm gonna actually have to try and shoot this thing here in our studio, our tiny studio. So in the background of the film, you do have some accents of stuff, but really what you see is them at the table, everything kind of falls off in the background. So the best option I had was using our black backdrop. And uh, we'll see how it works out. The aesthetic that the film had, that everything was lit by practical lights in the room, I've got a few options that I'm gonna be using. I have a hurricane lamp, which is oil-based, and it's gonna have an, an actual flame in it. And then I have an LED lamp, and I'm interested to see which one works better. Something else I talked about earlier was using red lighting. And what that does in black and white is it actually will give you a deeper, richer skin tone. And so I was gonna try and utilize this and put it on the talent and see if I notice a difference between using that and using a regular film light or one of these lanterns. All right, first thing I'm gonna try and tackle is uh, my boss Darren is Willem Dafoe. And so what I have is I got some food and I got a old looking bottle that I filled with peach tea to try and replicate that look of a darker liquid, a boozy whiskey. 
uh, feel. And then I'm using the LED lamps uh, right now. Something I do like about them is that they're very yellow. And yellow is one of the colors, just like red, where it can really change the way your black and white looks. And so I'm excited about that. And uh, so I'm gonna bring my boss in, see how it goes. I'm not crazy, you're crazy. No, no, this one's mine. What? <laughs> no, 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 you don't look there. You look here, you look here. The LED lamp look was nice, it was consistent, and since the lamp in the film used an LED bulb, it actually matches quite well with their footage. I actually enjoyed how the molding on the lamp created some shapes and textures in the footage. Now onto the hurricane lantern with the flame, and actually it ended up being my favorite. It has a beautiful glow, the movement of the flame adds beautiful nuance to the scene, and the practical light visually fits the time period. Okay, yes. Now if they weren't shooting on a custom film stock, then they probably would have gone this route. They probably would have used a practical light with a lantern and a flame. But since we were shooting digitally on my end, the lantern for me was no problem. And honestly, I think it kind of fits the aesthetic more. And now last, we have the experiment of washing the talent in the red light, and it was troublesome. I actually wouldn't recommend it. The footage looks normal at first, but then when you start to desaturate the images, it takes on an otherworldly amount of noise. To get around this, I actually had to move to the RGB mixer to remove the red color so that I could achieve a clean image. So that's it for me this time. I hope you enjoyed the tips that I had on post-coloring for black and white footage, my recreations of the lighthouse. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you would like me to cover in the future, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.